Hey, what up everyone? I'm Cine Cool, and this is Gems of War. And today I want to go over the top 20 mythics in the game as of 2023, June 2023. So this is not like the first uh, 20 mythics you should craft. This is not the 20 most powerful mythics. I don't know what to call it. It's more of a this or that. So I went through, I'll tell you how I went through this. So I went through all the mythics here. And I wrote down every single one that's good, pretty much. Which I came up with a pretty giant list of like 40 of them or something, right? And I had to narrow it down to 20 from there. So after that, I picked out the best ones, which there ended up being like 12 of them that I just could not leave off the list. They had to be on there. And I kind of set those to the side because they're probably top 10s. And I was more interested in eliminating like the weaker ones than like messing with the best ones at that moment so then i went through and i compared every other mythic to every other mythic so i went down the list and i would put a little tally mark i would say like um let me see here where's my paper oh i left it over there hold on a sec all right so i'd go down the list and i'd be like what's better you know this or that so like Phoenix or Fountain of Stars. And then I, if I thought Phoenix, I'd give Phoenix a tally mark. Or I would go, what's better, uh, you know, King of the Ravens or Obsidious? And whatever one I thought was better, I would give a tally mark. And I would go all the way down the list, give them all their chance to go up against everybody until I compared everything to everything. And then I just counted up the tally marks. I wasn't trying to think too hard about it. But I also did a lot, like, I wrote down a bunch of stuff. I did a bunch of tally marks. I did two different lists. I had to put them in order. Like, there was a lot involved in, in doing this, but I was also trying not to, like, think too hard about it. So at first, it was like, which one is better? Leave a tally mark. And then once I narrowed it down to, once I narrowed it down and everything, I put the top ten over here, and then I did the same thing. Which one, which one would I rather have? If I had to get rid of one or the other, which one would I rather have? And I would give that one a tally mark. And then, you know, I did that with, like, the top ten. So then I put the top ten in order, and then I counted up the tally marks for the not top ten, like the ten to twenty. And then whichever ones had the most tally marks, that's how I did it. So there wasn't, like, no favoritism involved here. Um, that's just the way I did it, with tally marks, comparing every mythic to each other, and, like, pretty much this or that is what I did. So, like I said, it's not going to be the first 20 you should craft, it's not going to be the 20 most powerful, it's more of a this or that. Which one would I rather have? Which one do I think is better? Which one would I, you know, give away to keep, you know what I mean? Like, would I keep Ironhawk and give away whatever, and then I would have to give Ironhawk a tally mark type stuff. So, that's how I did it. I was trying to you know, get all the good mythics, but not also not think about it super too hard. Just give it a tally mark if I thought it was better. But anyway, let's get into it. Let's just go from the top to the bottom, I guess. Um, number one with the most tally marks for me was Ironhawk. You probably knew this was going to be the case. It's just resources are king in this game. Everything in this game is about resources. Nothing matters as much as getting resources you can use resources to become more powerful to get stuff done and everything we're doing in this game is going after resources so i think the troop that does that for you gives you the most resources in the game should be the number one mythic so iron hawk is the number one mythic 25 blue brown yellow adana construct mech create 12 doom skulls and explode 21 gems deal five damage to all enemies when an ally casts a spell Mostly for the vault, but you can also farm merchants and angels with it. Um, and just so many resources. Noma Palooza's vault event, merchants and angels. It's the best for all that stuff. And all that stuff is resources. And this game is all about resources. So you can get diamonds from Ironhawk to go craft other mythics. You can get gems from Ironhawk to go further in events and get events done. You can get glory from Ironhawk, which you can turn into any other resource, etc. So it has to be the number one. All right, number two with the most tally marks. I would not want to give this one away unless it was up against uh, Ironhawk, I guess. Happened to be Zulgoth. So I put Zulgoth at number two. It's just how it is. 32 red, blue, purple, Karakoth boss. Kill an enemy, burn and freeze all remaining enemies, create 12 skulls. So one thing I do have to say before we get too far into this is that I did not rank Diamantina. I don't have Diamantina, 
but I would probably say it's in the top 10. You're going to have to slot it in wherever you want to and then drop everything else down if you're going to put Diamantina on this list. And I just don't have it, so I can't say... But I also did rank another one that I don't have. So I'm going to say Diamantina is in the top 10, but I don't know where to slot it because I don't have it. But I did rank one other mythic that I don't have, so let's go ahead and call Diamantina a top 10. Alright, number 3. Well, as far as Zul'Goth goes, instant kill, makes a bunch of skulls. It's awesome. You can do difficulty 12 explore. You can do the underworld with it. Pretty much any time you're trying to do anything, if Zul'Goth is available, you're probably going to use it. It's on Guild Wars teams, it's on Guild Wars Defend teams, it's on Difficulty 12 Explorer teams, it's in the Underworld, it's on the World Record team for the Underworld. You can do pet battles with it. You can do everything with Zul'Goth. So, instant kill, then make skulls, bang, bang, bang. It also, um, burn and freeze all remaining enemies, so... I just think Zul'Goth is number two. Number three. The third best mythic in the game as of 2023. High King Iron Gut. So High King Iron Gut, the third slot. 24 blue, brown, yellow, Zasian, goblin, deal damage to an enemy with a chance to devour, then equal to my attack. Gain an extra turn. Extra turn, that's always good. Not very many mythics have an extra turn. It does damage... And then it also will devour based on its attack. And these days, there's a lot of different ways to get your attack up to that 100. He's mostly the king of the underworld, but he can be used in other places as well. And he's really good with the with Zul'Goth, so those two together make an OP team. But yeah, just an extra turn and an instant kill where he gains all those stats to himself. And then the next devours even more of a high chance you know what i mean he gains that attack he gains their life he gains their magic he gains everything so with an extra turn on top of that so he's number three number four uh this one's kind of uh was hard to hard to do because i think back in the day i would call the wild queen better than arachnean weaver but i don't know i've kind of come around to the arachnean weaver so i apologize to anybody that yeah I said the Wild Queen was better than Arachnean Weaver, but it's very close. They got the same amount of tally marks, so it's not too crazy one way or the other. But I kind of did want to drop the Wild Queen down a little bit, but she didn't end up going very far. Uh, spoiler alert. But I'm going to call number number uh, four Arachnean Weaver. It's just so awesome. It has so much cool stuff on it. Low mana cost for a Mythic 20. Yellow, green, purple. Uh, Zolkari, Elf Monster, web all enemies, so that means they don't deal as much damage to you, right? Deal 51 true damage to the last two enemies. It's usually, like, at least half. Um, if an enemy dies, explode 15 gems. If you pair this with life and death, you can usually kill those last two enemies, then you explode the board, and then you do it again, and you win. And that's not all. That's not all. So if that was it, it wouldn't be up as high as it is. The low mana cost helps. Um, that it's an elf helps. You can 50% start it. The spell is good and everything. But it also has three good traits. Creeping Doom. 75% chance to summon a web spinner when an enemy dies. That might be the best summon in the game. Web spinner is an awesome legendary. Triple damage to webbed. Um, and, you know, this webs. And... Web Spinner's an awesome legendary. You could summon with a 75% chance, which is pretty high. Impervious, so it's immune to all status effects. And Stealthy, so it can't be targeted. It was just all around like a super duper really good mythic. Alright, number five. I might have showed my hand on this one, and I did, it didn't drop as far as I thought. I don't know. I guess I just have a soft spot for the Wild Queen. So some of these on here, this is my top 20. So... You might not agree with all of them. I just have a soft spot for the Wild Queen. Um, I'll tell you why here in a sec. But uh, 22, purple, green, brown, Pan's Veil, Elemental Wild Folk. Steal up to 45 attack from an enemy and give it to my first ally. Create a mix of 22 skulls and green gems. Summon a Bone Storm when an ally dies. That's not going to matter most of the time. But I just love that it steals the attack from an enemy. So it make it's making their attack lower. And then it's giving it to the perfect person on your team. So you can steal attack from their first slot or their second slot, whatever one is most dangerous. And then you can give it to your first slot, who's going to be using it. And then you could create a mix of 22 skulls and green gems, which will get an extra turn, you know, like 75% of the times. Not always, 
But what's cool about it is if you don't get that extra turn and it does backfire, you just stole attack from them and they're probably not going to hit you that hard. And you just gained a bunch of attacks, so when it's your turn, bang, you can kill them with skulls. So, I don't know, if you combine it with something that has, like, Entangle or something like that, it's really good. It's mostly used for PvP or Guild Wars. So whenever you get the Wild Queen, don't go around, like, trying to do Difficulty 12 Explorer or the Underworld or something, or thinking it's going to make other events faster or anything. It's more of a PvP Guild Wars troop. Um, just to steal the attack is my favorite part. Like, I know some people like the Wild King better than the Wild Queen, but he doesn't steal attack from anybody. He just gives attack to the whole team. So I just like that part of it. I don't know why. It just maybe it's a, there's a couple of these on here that maybe I just have a soft spot for. Um, number six. He's right here. He's the Lord of Slada. 27 green, blue, red, wild plains, war gear construct. Create six brown gems. Then convert all brown gems to doom skulls. Then inflict one to two bleeds and one to two death marks on random enemies. So he gets to create more brown, and then turn all the brown to Doom Skulls, which is cool. He doesn't just turn all brown to Doom Skulls. He creates more brown. So if there's already a lot of brown, he'll create more, and then turn all the brown to Doom Skulls. Then he inflicts one to two bleeds and one to two death marks on random enemies. Death marks, pretty good. And then 100% chance to ignore armor with skull damage. So that's true, true skull damage. Summon a Doomstorm at the start of battle, which is good. Some things summon a Doomstorm when an ally dies, or they summon a Doomstorm when an enemy dies. This summons a Doomstorm at the start of battle. So you got one from Jump Street. Armored, reduced damage from Skulls by 25%, which helps, because sometimes you'll put them in first slot. So I don't know, It just he happened to be get the most tally marks. He happened to be the sixth best mythic in the game to me. Um, when You, you can use him in many different places. Um... Some events, like world event with skull, damage, metal. Um, you can try him pretty much anywhere. He's just kind of like a glass cannon, though. He'll, he can get, he'll go down quick, but he'll put other things down really quick, too. So mostly use him in places like not Guild Wars. Like places where you, if you lose, it's no big deal. But when you win, you're winning fast. Alright, number seven. Since I had the Wild Queen at number five, you know... Where the heck is he? The Wild King. I had to put him here at number 7. Just under the Lord of Slaughter. Um, he's still almost as good as the Wild Queen in my opinion. And I know I get the reasons why some people think the Wild King is better than the Wild Queen. I just can't can't do it. I don't know why. 22 green, blue, yellow, Pan's Veil, Wild Folk. Enrage all allies and give them 41 attack. So that's good. Enrage is good. You get to use it once. And then it goes away. Like, Wild Queen's attack that she gives, it'll keep hap- you know? Like, it stays forever, and it keeps building and building and building. His, you give it, you use it, it's gone. Enrage, and enrage all allies, doesn't matter. Like, the second slot, the third slot, the fourth slot, it might as well just say enrage the first ally. Because enraging all allies doesn't matter, matter that much, so. Enrage all allies and give them 41 attack. His attack give is less than hers, 45 she gives. 41 he gives. So let's just... She wins there. She steals attack from an enemy. So they lose attack on the enemy team. He gives attack. He doesn't steal it. So there's the enemy team, if he misses, is going to still be hitting just as hard. They're not going to lose any attack. The Enrage All Allies is where I think people want to give him the edge. Um, but when you Enrage, you get to use it once and then it disappears. So you're going to have to cast him multiple times. The Wild Queen, you give attack, it stays forever. You know what I'm saying? So I don't know. I just like the Wild Queen better. But he's really close. He's only in 7 when she's in 5. So that's pretty close. Then create a mix of 22 Skulls and Yellow Gems. So many Bone Storm at the start of battle. That's another spot where he has a little bit of an edge. They're really super close. Like, I think the Tally Mark thing, they were all like, they might even have been tied. Like, the Arachnid Weaver and the Wild Queen were tied. And I think the Lord of Slaughter and the Wild King were, like, tied. But I just ended up putting them in this order, so it is what it is. So the Wild King, number seven. Pretty much use them anywhere you would use the Wild Queen. Number eight. Who did I give the eighth slot to? The Grey King. 
22, blue, brown, purple, Galvania, undead. I think some people underrate this thing. Destroy all gems of a chosen color. That's pretty good, right? Destroy. You can destroy like 14, 15. All enemies of that color take true damage. So if you're facing a Guild War situation where the team uses all the same color, you can hit all of them for true damage. And then they are also mana drained, silenced, and frozen. So if you hit them at the right time, you can drain all their mana, then silence them so they can't get mana back, and freeze them so they can't get extra turns. You pretty much, if you cast this thing before, yeah, if you cast this thing at the right time, you win. So he's really good. I like him in Guild Wars. And, um, you know, true damage to all. Anytime you have a situation where the enemy uses a lot of the same color, you can bring out the Grey King, and you're probably going to win if you cast it. He just does so many things. He's a mana generator. He's a disruptor. He does true damage to multiple enemies. Doesn't have any good traits, but his spell is just really, really good. I think some people underrate the Grey King. All right, who is next? Number nine. Who made the top ten? Let's see. I went with Tina 9000 at number nine. 24, red, green, brown, Adana mech. Deal a range of true damage to three random enemies and gain 92 armor. That's a lot of armor, and that's a lot of true damage. If you get lucky with this thing, it can do 92 true damage to the same enemy two or three times, right? Get a kill. Most of the time, if you're lucky, if you're lucky, he'll hit that top end of that range. He'll hit the same enemy twice, kill them, and then hit something else and weaken it real, real bad. So, Tina is, is pretty good. And then, on top of that, gaining all that armor. So, it's a good tank already. It's a mech. And then it gains almost 100 armor. It has electrified plating. Add 50% of armor to skull damage. It has spell block. Reduce damage from spells by 50%. And it has create three bomb gems when I die. Which you hope it, you hope it never dies. But, the reduce damage from spells by 50%. On top of gaining 100 armor every time it casts. It's just a really, really good tank. With true damage to multiple enemies, and it can hit the same enemy multiple times, too. Get a kill. Um, so who's number 10? Who's the last one out of the top 10? Uh, this one, you know, she's awesome. I just don't use her a lot, so I put her down at 10. But Arc Proxy Avendra. I think she deserves to make the top 10. But I had to take into consideration that I just don't use her very much. I should probably start trying to use her more. 26 purple, yellow, brown, Zalkari, Divine Elf. So two different ways to 50% starter. Convert all yellow gems to Uber Doom Skulls. That's good, like I said earlier. Converting... Well, actually, the Lord of Slaughter creates and then changes all. So that's why I like the Lord of Slaughter better. This just converts all yellow to, to Uber Doom Skull. Uber Doom Skull is really good. But it'd be nice if she would, like, create yellow and then convert all yellow. But she does convert all yellow gems to Uber Doom Skulls. Curse, web, and poison the strongest enemy. All that stuff's good. It's just one enemy, though. And then conjure and Uber Doom Storm when an enemy dies. Spell armor. So just super solid, really good mythic. Deserves to be in the top ten. Uber Doom Skulls. Like, one of the only reliable ways to do an Uber Doom Skull, like Doom Storm. So, pretty cool. Alright, that was the top 10. So, the next couple will be like honorary mentions for the top 10. But we're going to do the top 20. So, number 11. Y'all might be surprised by this list. You know I like certain mythics, but I tried to be super fair and do the this or that thing and give tally marks. And I didn't. I went exactly by it. I didn't like, if one had 13 tally marks and one had 14 tally marks, the one that had 14 won and went on the list. It doesn't matter who it was or if I like it or not. I went exactly by the tally marks. They're my tally marks, so there is a little bit of bias, but it was a this or that type of deal. Alright, who got 11? I went with Mistralis, the borderline top 10. It's like, you can't put it ahead of any of that other stuff that I just said, so it has to be a borderline top 10. Um, but we got 25, blue, brown, yellow, Stormheim, Elemental Fey. 
Deal splash damage to one to four random enemies, then jumble the board and gain an extra turn. If she did that four every single time, she probably makes the top ten. Unfortunately, here and there, she'll do the one. And you know what I'm saying? So that's the only problem. If she did that four every single time, or even a three every single time, she'd probably make the top ten. She has an extra turn. Not very many mythics have an extra turn. She jumbles the board, which is... It's never something that I'm like, oh, I wish I had a jumble. But when it happens, it's still, like, welcome. So, it's still something. It's like an above-average thing that happens. So, you got the splash damage. That's not just... You know, that's splash damage. So, it's going to hit three enemies. Or at least two. And you do it one to four times. So, you're pretty much hitting, like, everybody. Especially if it hits four times. And then jumble the board and gain an extra turn. On top of all of that, enchant all allies on four or five gym match... Reduce damage from spells by 25%. So you enchant all your allies. Not just a random ally. You know? It enchants every single ally on 4 or 5 gym matches. Which is just a really good mana generation thing. With an extra turn. So then you can do something else. With damage. It goes really well with like Sycorax and stuff like that. Where you can loop and loop and loop. Cast Mistralis. Go back to looping. Cast Mistralis. Go back to looping. Cast Mistralis. The enemy never gets a turn. And you win. So, she's number 11. Number 12. This might surprise you. Kind of surprised me a little bit. But it deserves it, I guess. What is number 12? Where are you? I went with the Scourge of Honor. It's the highest true damage in the entire game. The highest AoE true damage in the entire game. So he's very, very useful, hits very, very hard, skips right past their armor, goes straight for their um, HP, doesn't need, like, crazy Nisha medals. I mean, you do, you'd like to have them, but as I'm kind of, like, comparing it to Phonesia here. Like, true damage skips all the way by their armor, and, like, his 50% start is a legendary... Um, I don't know, Phonesia, you kind of need... A certain class. You kind of need three Nisha medals. Um, I don't know. It's just it was close. It was close. I went with the Scourge of Honor. Scourge of Honor has a good trait, a couple good traits. But yeah, Scourge of Honor, 22 red, green, brown, Cinemirage, Daemon, Wild Folk. Deal true damage to all enemies. So that's already good. Then it gains two mana back for each cursed or diseased enemy. So it could end up what gaining like eight mana back, which is a lot. And then you got Curse and Disease, a random enemy in Magic 4 or more gems. And Explode, a green gem at the start of battle. So, I don't know, man. It's just good. Curse, and it's a good curse. And then it also boosts off of that. It gets mana back for that. True damage, which is better than physical. You get 50% started. It's really good if you pair them up with, like, two Scourges of Honor. But, yeah, that's what's number 12 for me. Really good in situations where you have, like, a spell damage medal. Or you're just trying to get stuff done quickly. Alright, number 13. So she wasn't far behind. She wasn't far behind, but I went with the true damage option instead. But Phonesia is number 13, the 13th best mythic in the game. 24 red, green, yellow, suncrest, elemental, strix. Deal damage to all enemies, boosted by red gems and burning enemies. If there is a firestorm, deal double damage. 50% uh, chance to burn a random enemy at the start of my turn. Only thing I ever say is she's bougie. You gotta have, like, Sun Spear up a little bit. You gotta have, uh, Nisha Metals, you know. You want to have, uh, the Mirage Queen sometimes. You want to have Magma Dragon. Like, she's just a little bit bougie, so she's not in the top 10 or anything. But I'd feel comfortable putting her at 13. She's one. She's a top 15 Mythic. Useful for, like, pet, pet rescue. She's the second highest... Damage in the entire game after Diamantina for AoE damage. Um, it's just with the uh, Scourge of Honor, you get like the curse and the, and the and the mana back and all that stuff. I think uh, Scourge is a little bit lower of a mana cost, or are they the same? I think they tied anyway, and I just put the Scourge ahead. So some of these, when they're really close, like Phonesia and the Scourge of Honor, like they might have tied with their tally marks. Like he's 22 mana cost. He gains two mana back for each cursed or diseased enemy. He does true damage. 
And then she's 24 mana cost and doesn't have any way to gain back her mana. And um, But she still hits second hardest in the entire game after Diamantina and is really, really, really good. So that's my 13th best mythic in the game. 14. This one I have like a kind of a soft spot for, but it is really good. Um... I went with Megavore. Megavore at 14, 24, red, blue, brown, black hawk, merfolk, monster. Eliminate all armor from all enemies. That's a lot of damage. That's a lot of damage right there. Then deal damage to an enemy. So that's not all it does. It doesn't just eliminate all armor. Like imagine you're in difficulty 12 explorer or a really high delve or somewhere where they have really high stats. Think about all the damage that it's eliminating when it eliminates all armor from all enemies. That's a quite a bit. And then it also deals damage to an enemy. So after eliminate, eliminating all of its armor, it then does damage to one of them. And then submerges itself, so it can't get hit with AoE damage. The really cool part is the death below. It's an 8% chance to kill the last enemy in 4 or 5 gym match. That works best when you're looping, looping, looping. So you give yourself that 8% chance over and over and over. You can't count on it. Like, just in one instance, it's not going to happen. But if you're looping over and over and over, you should get it eventually, hopefully. That's that's what you're hoping for. You get a death below. Instant kill. Also has Impervious. But that was my 14th best mythic in the game. Also goes well with, like, Sycorax and Mistralis. Goes well with Rowan. It eliminates all the armor, so then Rowan can kill them. Type stuff. Alright, number 15. Number 15, I went with Guard's Avatar. 24, red, yellow, brown, white helm, divine knight, deal damage to all enemies, boosted by my armor, burn, undead, and silence daemon enemies. It's pretty much just a quick clear mythic. But you can 50% start it off of knight or divine, and then you can boost it up with armor. It has a good boost ratio, and it hits really hard. It's kind of like the Tesla of mythics, but just not as good. But, you know, boosted by my armor. So, you, like, use the Shield of Urskaya. You cast it on the Guard's Avatar, and the Guard's Avatar hits harder. It wipes in one shot quite a bit. It goes well with Sir Quentin Hadley. Sir Quentin Hadley's a good legendary, and they both, pretty much if you're ever using Guard's Avatar, you're also using Sir Quentin Hadley, who is also good. So you have two good troops. And, um, yeah, he just has to make the top 15, in my opinion. You use him quite a bit, and he hits really hard. This next one might surprise you, and it is the one I mentioned that I do not have. It just got tally marks. I just looked at it, and I was like, man, this thing's pretty good. I went with the King of the Ravens at number 16. 24 blue, purple, yellow, glacial peaks, Phaestrix. Explode all purple gems and spirit gems. Spirit gems are the ones that uh, drain mana. So when you're exploding all of the spirit gems, you're going to drain quite a bit of mana from the enemy team. And you're exploding all the purple and all the blue. And it uses both of those colors. So it can pretty much get itself back up a lot of the time, or at least get close. And then it also deals damage to the last two enemies. Boosted by spirit gems. Convert two blue gems to spirit gems when my turn begins. Summon a dark storm at the start of battle. Immunity to mana burn, mana drain, and mana steal. So it's also immune to the spirit gems that it's blowing up. Um, and it creates the spirit gems that's blowing up and it also makes a purple storm so it does everything like it's really like a synergetic mythic i wish i had but it's a pay to win mythic um free to play doesn't have it yet so i don't have it yet I, there's no possible way for me to have it but it did get enough tally marks to be the 16th best mythic in the game are you always going to use it on offense i don't know but it's a really good defensive mythic and it looks like a pretty good mana generator and disruptor and it still does damage, too. So, I like it. I can't wait to get it. Alright, number 17. This one's kind of got a boost recently. This one I would probably would never have put in the top 20 in, the, like, the last couple of years. But it was, it was kind of a weird one. It was in the top 20. And then it got a nerf. So it dropped out of the top 20. And then it got a, a boost. So it went back to the top 20. I don't know. I think that's how it went. But let's go look at Ubastet. Ubastet. Ubastet got the 17th most tally marks. 
24, red, yellow, brown. Pride lands divine Raksha. Deal damage to the two weakest enemies, boosted by all ally and enemy attack. If one of the enemies dies, then kill the other one. It's pretty much a easier to do, depending on whether you have rope dart or not. But there's other weapons you could use instead of rope dart that might be able to do this. But, um, you know, like you think about like Scorpius, who's very similar, who needs another mythic to do its thing. Rope, uh, Ubastet doesn't need another Mythic, but it needs Rope Dart, which is really hard to get. But I think you could replace Rope Dart with something else and still make it happen. As long as it's a weapon that hits really hard, single target, you might still be able to do it without the Rope Dart. But Rope Dart is the one you usually use if you're going to do the Ubastet. And it's just, it makes the top 20. It just makes the top 20. And I ranked it a little bit above Scorpius. So, Ubastet, instant kill. It's killing two enemies at once. It goes really good with rope dart. It, it works in a lot of places. Um, number 18. Now this one... This one could be... A little bit... Of my favoritism... And bias. Um, shining through a little bit. But... I just had to put it in the top 20. I, I love the flaming oni. I love the flaming oni. Uh, 22 red, green, brown... Zayjin, Damon Goblin. I'm kind of surprised that it's not cl like how low I ranked it in the top 20. So you got to give me this one. Um, sometimes I'll call them a borderline top 10. But I guess if you're in the top 20, you're kind of like a borderline top 10 anyway. Because there's 100 Mythics. So you're way closer than that 99th Mythic. A as like a... As a... um, As number 18. You're more of a borderline mythic than the 99th mythic or the 50th mythic. You know what I mean? So he's kind of similar to a borderline mythic. He's like a borderline, borderline top 10. <laughs> you know? So 22 red, green, brown, uh, Zayjin, Damon, Goblin. Summon three random goblins. Goblins are always good. So that's one of the best summons in the game. Multiple goblins. Then explode 45 green gems and gain an extra turn. Extra turn. Not very many mythics have that. You're noticing... High King Iron Gut, Mistralis, Flaming Oni, top 20 mythics, extra turn. And explodes the color it uses, and explodes the color that the goblins would use. And uh, converts two red gems to burning gems when my turn begins. Summon a Firestorm at the start of battle, it uses red. I don't know, I just like Flaming Oni as a mana generator, a safe troop, a summoner. Put it on the bottom of your team, and it's hard for them to beat you. It's kind of like the Grey King. Where if you have the Great King and you get it off, it's hard for them to beat you. Flaming Oni, if you put it on the bottom of your team, it's hard for them to beat you. So, shout out to Flaming Oni. I had to put it in the top 20. Alright, another one. Another one. They're at the bottom now. They're at the bottom now. Give me, Cut me some slack here. Like, what would you put here instead of these? Let me know in the comments. Let me know your top 20. I'm sure you could definitely take out my bottom three and figure out three that should be there. Like, that's not super hard to do. All right, we got Sycorax at number 19. 25, green, blue, brown, black hawk, elemental mystic. Double a chosen color gem on the board, then create three more gems of that color. Give life to all allies of that color. It's impervious. I just love it. I just love it. Loop and loop and loop and loop. Pair it up with the Mistralis or a Megavore or something like that that does something on four or five gem match. And man, get that death below, get that enchant, whatever it may be. And it's a really good mana generator. It gives life to all allies. So if he's in first slot and he's looping on like an all brown team or an all blue team, you can get your whole team up to not like a thousand HP. And all the while, hopefully you have something that has a, a that gains something off of four or five gym matches. So I just had to throw him on her on there. I love Sycorax. I put it at number nineteen though. And it was still based on tally marks, like a this or that type of deal. Would I rather have this or that? So, of course, I didn't like. If it was Ironhawk versus Sycorax, I gave Ironhawk the tally mark. If it was Phoenicia versus Sycorax, I gave Phoenicia the tally mark. You know what I'm saying? I didn't. If it was Wild King versus Sycorax, I gave the Wild King the tally mark. So it was off tally marks, so it still earned it. But I also am slightly biased. So anything that's even close, which you would think would make the top 20, that's a... 15 to 20 type of mythic, maybe I gave Sycorax a tally mark instead of it. You know what I'm saying? Alright, here comes the last one. Who is it? 
I was surprised at how many, like, new mythics were on here. How many new mythics? We've been getting some good ones, and I never... I didn't think that. I didn't think we were getting so many good ones. So if I look at this list... I ranked Phoenix as the 20th best mythic in the game. 22, Purple, Yellow, Brown. Volpacia. Volpacia is how I say it. Wargare Divine. I tried to say it right. Choose one. Deal. 43 true damage to all enemies or summon 1 to 3 Volfire Hunters. True damage to all. You know I love that. Also, bless and enchant a random ally when I match four or more gems. So you could put that with Sicker X and bless and enchant your whole team. It starts battles with 25% mana. And, you know, true damage to all enemies. I love it. And then, if you get into a jam, you can summon one to three Volfire Hunters. So, I don't know. I, it just gained the tally marks. It got number 20 out of the top 20. Phoenix, which is a newer mythic. But yeah, if I look at this list here, which one of these are new? Diamond Tina's new. Um, the Wild King's kind of new. Um, King of Ravens is new. Phoenix is new. So we've had more good new mythics than I thought we did. All right, I'm going to do three honorable mentions. I just couldn't go without mentioning these. So I have to mention them on the video because these will probably be the ones people will be talking about. Like, why didn't this make the list? Scorpius, I think, is a top 25 mythic. 28, purple, yellow, brown, drifting sands monster. Deal damage to the last two enemies. The damage is lethal on any poisoned enemy. So most people do that with your rally, but you do need another mythic to do this. Um, Bane of Mercy came into the game and made this so you could do it wherever you want instead of just specific places. Um, you can also use Sky Scorpion to do it if you don't have your rally. It's like Scorpius or Ubistet. Which one do you put in the top 20? And I chose Ubistet. I just thought more people probably have Rope Dart than your rally. But I don't know. Maybe it's the other way around. Maybe I should put Scorpius where Ubistet is and put Ubistet in the... You know, down there in the top 25. But this is how it went for me with the tally marks. And uh, Scorpius would be an honorable mention to the top 20. Which means you could take anything out and put him in, like, from 15 to 20. And I wouldn't be mad at it. Uh, who else? Obsidious. Obsidious is an honorable mention for the top 20. So from 15 to 20, you could take anything out. And put in Obsidious, and I wouldn't be mad at it. 24, Red, Purple, Brown, Drakzum, Daemon, Elemental. Like, p maybe you should take Flaming Oni and Sycorax out. And put in Obsidious and Scorpius. I wouldn't be mad at it. But, you know, I just love Flaming Oni and Sycorax, so I had to put them in the top 20. 24, Red, Purple, Brown, Drakzum, Daemon, Elemental. Deal heavy splash damage to a random enemy. Destroy a 5x5 block. There's a 50% chance to deal 52 light splash damage to a random enemy. That's a lot of stuff. Stun all enemies in 4 or 5 gym match. That was a huge deal back in the day when it came into the game. But then we got Elementalist. So Obsidious dropped out of the top 10. And I guess it dropped all the way down to like 21 for me. Or 22 or 23. Somewhere in that range. Which is still really good. We have 100 freaking Mythics. If you're in the top 25, you're still really, really good. Stone Skin, 50% Skull Reduction. Dust Storm when an enemy dies. So some people will like... Uh, pair this with a curse option. That way you can make sure you can curse and curse stun everything on the enemy team. And he does it to all enemies. So it's an e it's like a... Sometimes Obsidious is really good, but most of the time you use Elementalist. So shout out to Obsidious as an honorable mention. Then I had to put one on here that I thought is a little bit underrated. And that's been going really good for me recently. Hatir and Scroll. 23, Red, Blue, Purple, Magrim Woods, Elemental Beast. Two different ways to start it with 50% mana. You can do Forest Guardian or the Mirage Queen. Convert all green gems to Lycanthropy gems. I think people just read that part and they're like, nope, I'm out of here. Nope, Lycanthropy, screw that. What does that even mean? I hate Lycanthropy, so I'm out of here. I feel like that's what happens. Convert all green gems to Lycanthropy gems. Nope, see ya. Peace out. Later. This troop sucks. I think that's what happens. And all yellow gems to Doom Skulls. So you're turning green to purple and yellow to Doom Skull. And then summon a Winter Wolf or Wark. It also has a summon. It has Impervious. And yeah, I don't know. It's a it's a double convert that I like. 
that's been undefeated for me on red guild wars and i had to shout it out is it a top 25 it's a borderline top 25 like give me that double convert with lycanthropy it can't be lycanthropy right so i don't think so anyway and it, it, it'll turn stuff into crappy beasts it screws up the enemy's guild war team think about it convert all green gems to lycanthropy gems purple it uses purple so it gets right back up really fast if you're missing anything it'll summon something in winter wolf or warg it does lycanthropy gems so it can change their guild war their perfectly constructed stupid sweaty wrestler guild wars defend team it'll convert it into a stinky beast and screw up their whole team all the wow yellow gems to doom skulls crushing them in the face with skulls too with the summon on it so it's all about this spell you just gotta forget about the lycanthropy just change that word to purple and just enjoy because it's it's really good i like it top 25 borderline top 25 a tear and scroll but anyway that was it let me know what you think put yours what did i forget did i forget something there's probably one that i forgot or maybe i don't have it or you think my list is crazy but i don't think it think it's too crazy also I know Mr. T has been working on a tier list, and I did not put this out today because he's talking about putting out his tier list tomorrow. Dude has been talking about putting out his tier list for six months now, and I've been very patient and respectful and not put out any kind of mythic list because, you know, I didn't want to step on his toes. But after six months, you can't you only wait so long. So it has nothing to do with his thing that might come out tomorrow or it might come out six months from now we don't know so but it will be fun to compare so i, I would i love that i did mine first that way i don't get influenced by his because i'm definitely going to watch it so i'd rather put mine out first not get influenced by his and then check out his and then yeah see what see how how we did so anyway like share subscribe consider joining helps a lot to your get about channel comment below you guys earned this with the 100 likes on the world event team video i really appreciate it we might do that again let me know what kind of videos you'd like to see peace <laughs>